I made a text-based adventure game in the Windows XP command prompt. Stick around to the end of the video for a narrated playthrough of the final game. If you're around my age or older, you probably remember this sound. This was what I'd hear before booting up Age of Mythology, making videos with Windows Movie Maker, or making games in batch files. Yep, batch files. I don't remember exactly how or why I started making games for the Windows Command Prompt of all things. I suspect it had to do with a minimal barrier to entry. All I had to do was open up Notepad and start typing. Here's a game I made from 2009, almost exactly 14 years ago. It's a text-based life sim game in inspired by the stick RPG flash game, which I'm sure many of you remember. As a fun nostalgia trip, I wanted to make a new batch file game in Windows XP. This is the making of Skeleton, a text-based adventure game. The first thing that I needed was a virtual machine, so I downloaded VirtualBox, acquired a copy of Windows XP Professional, and got to work getting it installed. Everything was going smoothly until the blue screen of death. I had no clue what this error meant and Google search didn't help, so I deleted the virtual machine and tried again, this time with a slightly different configuration. This installation was going at a snail's pace. I gave the virtual machine plenty of CPU power, so what was up? It blue screened again. This cycle repeated a few times until I finally decided to give the machine only one CPU in the configuration. Much to my surprise, this fixed all of my issues. The installation of Windows XP was speedy after that. I provided my CD key and went through all the settings steps, and then I heard that glorious sound. I was in. The next step was to install VirtualBox Guest Editions so I could run the virtual machine at a higher resolution. Perhaps unsurprisingly, this failed too. But after several trial and error installations, I finally had a working instance of Windows XP. Of course, I had to poke around some of the software that came with this version of Windows, like Windows Movie Maker. I even opened up Internet Explorer and was surprised to find that Google still works on this ancient version. No site I tried to visit would load, but I still think it's fascinating that Google is obviously putting effort into continuing support for a browser that is almost 15 years old. In any case, it was time to start working on the game. I decided that I didn't want to use Notepad. If I had used Notepad for this project, that would have been more accurate to my experience making CMD games as a 14 year old in 2009, but me now being a much more sophisticated engineer, I needed something a little bit more competent. I found a version of Notepad++ online that still works on Windows XP, so I got that downloaded and installed no problem. I created my game.bat file and wrote my slightly degenerate version of Hello World, simply yo. The idea for this game was pretty simple. I was going to make a short adventure game where you would play as a skeleton that has to make his way through a dungeon and ultimately escape. Pretty straightforward. I also wanted to put some effort into making the game humorous. This game was going to be story heavy with some light combat elements and at least one puzzle. The interesting thing about writing CMD scripts is that it's not easy. There are weird rules about variable expansion. Setting variables doesn't behave the way you expect a lot of times, and it's very difficult to reuse code and define proper functions. Aside from the occasional puzzling issue with batch file scripting, making the game was pretty straightforward. Don't get me wrong, it's a nightmare of an experience and I'm not even doing something that complex. My 14 year old self was definitely playing on hard mode and looking at my code from 2009, it's clear that I had no idea how to effectively write batch scripts. After several hours of work, I had completed the game. You can download and play the game yourself by visiting the link in the description. If you'd rather watch a playthrough, then I present to you, as promised, a narrated playthrough of the game. A new adventure waits. Press any key to get started. Water drips from the ceiling. Rats scurry along the floor. You appear to be in a dungeon of sorts, but you can't recall how you got here. You think back to your last memory and realize you have no memory of your life at all. Intrigued by this discovery, you take a look at your surroundings. To your surprise, you notice your hands are bone. Your body has no flesh. You're a skeleton. Neat. You should probably figure out what happened to you. You are currently enjoying a long nap in a sarcophagus. You reckon you've been here for a while. 
so you decide to sleep in a bit more. Some more time passes, and you still feel no desire to uncover the truth of how you got here. You climb out of the sarcophagus and take a look around. You're in an unassuming stone room. You hear the soothing clock-like sound of dripping water. There's another skeleton in the corner. He seems not to have awakened from his death. You presume he was a soldier based on his attire. You're standing in the damp crypt beside your now empty sarcophagus. There's a dead fellow in the corner. There are passageways to the north and the south. You're sure now this man was a soldier. On his hip is a sheathed sword. Fight! You hit and deal one damage. The skeleton soldier raises his sword to take a swing at you. The skeleton soldier hits you dealing one damage. You missed. The skeleton soldier rate the skeleton soldier hits you dealing one damage. You hit and deal one damage. You looted a sword, damage plus one. You're back in the damned crypt from whence you came. The skeleton soldier is still dead in the corner. There are passageways to the north and the south. You step into a room furnished with long tables. Upon the tables are various alchemical tools. Beakers, tubes, and strange ingredients are strewn about. On one of the tables, you notice a boiling cauldron. The cauldron doesn't have a visible heat source. Behind the cauldron is a cabinet which looks to contain potions and vial. To the north is the crypt. To the west is a room that seems to be emitting faint sparkles. To the east is a storage closet. You enter a dusty room brimming with crates, barrels, and other odds and ends. Atop a nearby crate is a rope. There's a suspiciously empty crate in the corner of the room. To the west is the alchemy room. The crate is rather large. It could easily contain a full-grown man. A compulsive thought flicks through your mind. You should climb in. You try to resist the compulsive thought but you lose the battle with yourself. After all, what's the harm in trying it? You climb into the crate. It's pretty unremarkable. You sit in the crate for a while. When you've had enough, you decide to climb out. As you attempt to climb out, you come to a horrifying realization. You are completely paralyzed. Facing the terror of an eternity stuck in a crate, you feel panic set in. You try to collect yourself to no avail. You will spend an eternity here. Finally, you regain some of your capacity to move. You begin to flail manically. A jarring force pierces your core. In a moment of supernatural clarity, you realize that you're standing beside the crate. You're not trapped at all. You stand for a moment, confused. Did that just happen? You enter a dusty room brimming with crates, barrels, and other odds and ends. Atop a nearby crate is a rope. There's a suspiciously empty crate in the corner of the room. To the west is the alchemy room. You collect the rope. You are back in the dusty room brimming with crates, barrels, and other odds and ends. There's a suspiciously empty crate. You step into a room furnished with long tables. Upon the tables are various alchemical tools, beakers, tubes. You open the potion cabinet, and among the empty and broken jars are to full health potion. You grab the to health potions. These will come in handy. You step into a room furnished with long... You take a peek at the potion cabinet, just in case the more health potions have spontaneously spawned. Much to your surprise, there are no more health potions. You step into a room furnished with long... You enter a dark room. Through the darkness you notice a slight sparkling emanating from all around. As you adjust to the darkness, you see that the sparkling is emitting from ancient reliquaries. These reliquaries no doubt contain valuable artifacts. You should be careful here. At the end of the room appears to be a table with three unlit candles. 
To the east is the alchemy room. You approach the unlit candles which sit upon an altar. Hanging on the wall above the altar is an oddly intricate portrait of the number five. Beside the candles is an old tome. It has been opened to a page emblazoned with the title, The Revealed Holy Order of the Base Two, Number Sister. Unfortunately, the words on the page have faded to the point of illegibility. None of the candles are lit. Only the leftmost candle is lit. The leftmost and middle candles are lit. All the candles are lit. The leftmost and middle candles are lit. Only the leftmost candle is lit. Because of your inferior intelligence, you cannot solve the puzzle. Frustrated by your imbecility, you embrace your inner Cro-Magnon and violently throw the candles to the ground. After your fit of rage subsides, you notice a key sitting upon the altar. You take the key. You return to the reliquary room. These reliquaries no doubt contain valuable artifacts. You should be careful here. At the end of the room is the altar where you performed a ritual to receive a key. To the east is the alchemy room. You step into a room furnished with long tables. Upon the tables are very... You're back in the damned crypt from whence you came. The skeleton soldier is still dead in the corner. You find yourself in a well-lit room. The source of the light is a large hole in the ceiling, through which sunlight penetrates. To the south is the crypt. To the west is an ornate locked door. You produce the key retrieved from the reliquary room. Cautiously you approach the ornate door. Raise the key and bring it to the lock. As you do this, the key begins to pull itself toward the lock. You release the key. It slams into the lock and twists itself. The echoes of heavy machinery fill the room. The ornate door slowly swings open. As you step into the room, you hear a rustling on the ceiling. Before you can look up, a mass of pearly white flesh falls from the ceiling. A giant maggot lands in front of you with a gut-churning squelch. Fight! You hit and deal to damage. You strike the maggot with a weak blow. It lunges toward you in retaliation. You quickly sidestep the maggot as it hurls past you and into a weapon rack. The weapons, seemingly still sharp, tear the maggot's rubbery flesh apart. The maggot's entrails and fluids flood the room, covering the floor with a thin layer of iridescent oil. The room in which you find yourself smells of death. Blood stains cover the brick walls. Corpses hang from the ceilings by corroded chain. The walls are lined with torture devices of varying complexity. Curiously, one of the torture stations has nothing but a restraining chair and a copy of the Great Gatsby. At the far end of the room is a desk and bookshelves. To the east is the well-lit room whence you came. You approach the desk and bookshelves. There is nothing much here. There is a single book in the bookshelf and a note upon the desk. You pick up the note which is scribbled upon stained parchment. The note reads as follows, Mr. Warden, I'm writing concerning the mystic we have been working on for these past months. I am pleased to inform you that we acquire the information you seek. The way through the grove pass is to utter these words before the monolith, the Jurio. Atepuma, please provide us with further orders. Your staff. P.S. See you at the potluck next week. You take the note. You approach the desk and bookshelves. There is nothing much here. There is a single book in the bookshelf. The room in which you find yourself smells of death. Blood stains cup. You find yourself in a well-lit room. The source of the light is a large hole in the ceiling, through which sunlight penetrates. You climb up the rope and are blinded by a ray of sunshine. After a moment of adjustment, you find yourself in a forest grove. The trees around the grove are too thick to pass. A path leads to the north, but is blocked by a stone monolith. You approach the monolith and notice that it is inscribed with words. The words read, 
only for spoken truth shall I open. It's a door, and it seems to be asking for a passphrase. A deep and resounding sound of crushed boulders rings through the air. The monolith cracks down the middle and swings open. Ahead of you is a dark cave. Deep into the cave a faint orange glow emanates. You step into the cave and approach the orange glow. As you venture deeper into the cave, you discover the source of the orange glow. Braziers are lit in front of a fresco painted upon the cave wall. You peer at the painting. The images depict a young businessman who appeared to be in a struggle to forge a profitable business. Frustrated by his lack of success, the businessman exhumed the graves of the dead. In a demonic ritual, he brought the corpses back to life and sent them to work 16-hour shifts in his factories with no benefits or pay. The final image depicts the necromancer's untimely demise due to a factory mishap. The undead workers rejoiced in their captor's death and eventually made their way back to their resting places. You were one of these workers. You have completed the game. I hope you enjoy this short adventure. Download the game using the link below. Leave a like on the video and subscribe to Firebelly's YouTube channel. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to like and subscribe. You can wishlist Gunforged on Steam. And if you want to learn how to build a 2D survivor style game in Godot 4, you could check out my Udemy course. To stay up to date with my content, you can sign up for my newsletter at firebelly.com. Links for all of that are in the description below.